rotation's not going to be possible as efficiently if we don't have the, the post set up, right. the bump, right? Everybody knows the bump. So that's where you today, when you showed up, even though you had the bump going, what did we need? More. More, more bump. <laughs> more bump. More, yeah. more bump. Like yeah. More cowbell. So, <laughs> more bump. <laughs> more yeah. cowbell, exactly. So here's the big thing, buddy. How much bump do we need? Well, I like to say it like this these days. Your femur. Mm -hmm. I like to get the femur feeling like it's right on top of my foot. Okay. Okay. So for you, that's really feeling probably a couple inches, not just one inch, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, buddy. Let's get after it. When, when I do the hip bump again, so, yes. so I was kind of just going like that, but I need to go yes. all the way there. And I'm glad you're addressing this. There's a lot of questions on this from all of our viewers. What that feels like to some might be more than others because of where they were. Yeah. Right? And a lot of people sit back. Well, here's the big thing. What I'm doing, I'm keeping my sternum dead still. I'm keeping my hips dead square. And I'm really, really pushing that left femur on top of my lead foot. Okay? And what happens is, as I do that, that right knee moves to the inside of my right foot. That's what puts all the pressure on the inside yeah. of the foot. Okay? So as far as the lower body is concerned, yes, you're feeling like this. Not only are you going forward, but you're actually going back at that so foot. So it's, it's... You feel it brace? It should feel like it lights up the inside of this right here and more of like yeah. the flat outside of the foot right there. That's good. Now you're just maintaining that. Oh my gosh. How much better was that? Yeah. That was effortless, right? That had some a little compression. A little compression sound. to yeah. it, right? It's like Nicholas. If you watch, he would, he would do a drill. He would put the feet like this. Okay? And you can see all it's doing is it's keeping the pressure over here. Right. And it's putting the feet in a position where they should be more of as opposed to the opposite. But it feels like you have a door stop out here and a door stop under here. And all it does is you put the pressure there, but it just gave you a feeling of what it's like to be, to be there. you know, on, the, on that lead side. So that's extreme. Mm -hmm. Okay. All I'm doing in my actual setup is creating that post and that brace. I feel the pressure right in here and I feel the pressure more on the flat of my lead foot. Now watch this. When I turn, watch how my right knee stays in place. Yeah. Okay. And I can really move around that lead hip. Big post. And see, watch, one thing he does really well, Kev, go back behind him real quick. One thing that I love that Mark does, he keeps his hips very square as he does, as you do that. Go ahead and go from a neutral position again. Now show us the bump. Okay, see how he's doing that, guys? He's, he's not opening the hips. He's not closing the hips. He's keeping them square, and he's just posting that lead leg up. I love that. There we go. Okay, so okay. you have a hip bump here in the beginning that I had you create, and you have to make sure that that post remains. So when you look at this post, yeah. okay, and you look at this, I have a wall right here, essentially on the outside of my right hip. I'm turning that pocket for a person who bumps into it away from the wall. That's what it feels like. It feels like the right pocket's going back towards the target. Great visual here, right? If there's a wall right here, see that wall? Yeah. Let's just do a practice swing. No, no actual, yes. You wanna feel like so that. See, even then I kinda it, went there. Yeah, you wanna turn that almost away from the wall. You feel but that? Without locking this with the... Remember, it goes like this. From the face on view here, the golfer will get, did he just lock out his knee? Watch from the down the line view, how I turn, I keep this flex and turn from here. That was the same exact turn yeah. I just made, okay? Same exact turn I just made. That's the, the exaggeration of what a golfer who sways needs to feel. Think about it. Their hip drops, this hip goes out, and the spine is always perpendicular to the, to the lower body or the belt line. So you get this look, right? And that's the reverse pivot. Yeah. Kind of. So watch this. This is what people do. Yeah. Here's the opposite. All that is, is my right pocket, or even my right cheek moving back into my left. So a little bit of it's good, just not A little where, bit of it's good. I mean, just, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really exaggerating that. Yeah. You guys see mine when I really swing. Look, it's nothing, it's nothing crazy, it just turns back. Yeah. You know, but the visual for you always the stays feeling. flexed. Yes. Bump that hip more. There it is, and let's go one piece, shoulders and hands together. Yeah, see, it's all day for you. This is just what I want you doing. It's perfect, perfect. Keep that post. Much better, much better. Did you feel that? Yeah. That was much better. I do feel it's, it's 
Funny because I do feel a lot more flexed yeah. into the than I ever have before. Now that I'm finding that, and if I start with this knee broken, and that's the thing, it's easier to keep it broken. Yep. Because the I think the explain hands going to back explain first. Explain to the viewer what you mean by your right knee. I uh, have the problem of I kind of lock out my right knee when I when I go back, kind of like that, and I, you know, I know that that's wrong, but I've been having a hard time keeping this a little bit broken. You over rotate too soon. Right. And the way that I am, am teaching that and the way that I'm explaining to a lot of golfers now, which I really like this uh, way of talking about it, the person who rotates too soon is typically turning from their right knee, mm -hmm. not just their the right pocket yeah. and their right shoulder, right? So the hip and the pocket, or the, the hip and the shoulder are turning and look at my right knee. It's staying stays flexed. The, same. Yeah. the golfer who turns from the right knee, as we talked about, goes like this. Yeah. And the great way of explaining that, and I, and I really like this visual for everybody. If I have, you know, let's, let's just go right to the right setup, okay? 70-30 as far as the weight distribution, mm -hmm. okay? Well, ideally, in the set position, I'm still sitting here with 70% of that weight on the front half there. And then I turn back to where the pressure gets back into the back half. That's connection built from the ground up. Right. Now, in your case, what happened was, like so many, they turn from right here, and that locks out too soon, getting the pressure back here too early. Yeah. That often leads to an inside takeaway for most, because right. it opens the door for that. But the big thing it leads to is the hands are only halfway back, and the pressure's back there. Yeah. So now they spend the rest of the time lifting, and because Nothing. this has been stalled out for so long, then it shoots ahead. So you, you kind of double screw yourself, connect. right? Yeah, yeah just because you, you, get, you get back here to where now you've already built the pressure, mm -hmm. connection's lost, arms lift, and then the body shoots ahead of the arms that are already disconnected, and it becomes a big old you know, flipping and guessing game through impact of what's going to get, you know, of how we can hit it straight and get the arms caught back up. Right. So, simply put, 70-30. When you do this drill, it's nice because you can set the club and feel it up there. You can feel that you're not turning from the right knee. You're turning from the right pocket. You're turning from the right shoulder. And when you do that, the pressure just crawls from the ball of the foot back to the heel mm -hmm. at the rate I'm turning. Right. So I can feel that pressure just go like this. And that's a kind of a neat way to, yeah. to visualize that. Keep that anchor point, chest and hands together, buddy. Oh, swing of the day. Notice how when you bump your hips, how the ball starts straight mm -hmm. and you have better contact. You're right. Here's why. When you bump your hips, it helps the low point of the swing be more in front of the golf ball. Now right. think about what happens to this if the low point's in front. It's more stable when it hits it and then hits the ball after, right? Or I'm sorry, hits the ground after the ball. Think about the other way. We sit back a little bit. Well, now we hit back here. Mm -hmm. And think about this, if the club hits behind the ball, what's it doing? It's released the angle, chunky, and the club face turns, there's the chunk left. Right. And do you feel like your head is dead over the ball, well, eight irons, so I'll put it here, hip bump. I feel like now my head's a little behind the ball. Absolutely. So that's, it's, it's, it's okay. This ball, for, for, so this is, that's, a, that's a great, great question. Watch this. I have a pitching wedge in my hand right here just showing you guys some shots. If I was just actually hitting a golf shot and... And Mark, here, I'll kind of angle it so you guys can both see. If I was actually hitting a golf shot here, I'm just barely ahead of center with this. This thing is practically under my left eye, right? The ball itself would be like right there as far as the uh, alignment away from my head. That's going to be where I can make sure I hit the ball first and have, I already have a lofted club in my hand. I'm going from wedge to driver and everything else gradually in right. between, sternum to shoulder. So eight iron. Just from where it would be placed, mm -hmm. you'll be a little behind it. And me maintaining my sternum where it is, I'm going to be a little behind it. That would be right on the left side of my head. I always say wedges are practically under the nose. The, the pitching wedge starts to get over to left eye, nine irons over in here, and eight really? irons That's where I actually will feel the, uh, the ball be on the left side of my face. Dude. I mean, you could not hit it any better than that. I mean, that's just unbelievable, dude. I, I mean, <laughs> looking at it like, yeah. You see how far it was. It goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had to watch that one. Notice how even though the hip bump is a thought, mm -hmm. how every single time I'm having to go bump it more. Yeah. And then when you bump it more, it's like really good. Yeah, it's such a, it's because I'm so, I, I thought I was doing it right. You know, I was kind of just doing that. And I really need to. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, it's like, it, the feeling is like, you almost feel like this right here gets to the outside of your left foot. That's the feeling for you, Okay. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh man, dude, that is absolutely perfect. And Kev's okay. got the shot tracer running, so you're gonna be able to see that thing just cruising. <laughs> Still not 160 yards, but. <laughs> but, 155. Okay, I'll take that. Yeah, I mean, it's not too bad for an eight iron. No. I do have one more question yeah. about the hip bump with the longer clubs. Absolutely. Um, I feel like I'm changing the angle. And that's what we want to make lot. sure. And that's, that's what we wanted to make sure. So when you do that, like, go ahead and I'm going to put this right here. You want to keep them dead square. You don't want to feel. Are they dead square like that? Yeah. So yeah. Okay. some of just go like this. It feels, it feels like I'm opening up. But. And, and that's what you want to refrain from doing. And here's, I will be honest with you, the wider the stance, the, the more, more you it, feel the that. more people want to feel like they go like this. It's, it's easy when you're like this, but I'm always watching my knees. And I'm watching the hips. I want the knees to not go like this, to not go like this, yeah. but to stay square like that. That's perfect right there, buddy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And here's the thing, you know, you, you, that is so, the post is so much more exaggerated than what my interpretation was. Before you pull the trigger, you'll get in there and go like this. Yeah. And then take it back. I'm like, yeah. well, you did it and then you didn't. You got to set it and hold it. Set it and turn from there. We're creating some fixed points with that lower body, especially to be able to really turn efficiently around, not have them drifting. The drifting back and forth gets the arms and hands overactive in the swing. It's that nice tight rotation that allows the body and the hands to, you know, work together. It helps square the club face up with the body's rotation and not simply the arms and hands moving independently of the body. At Porzak Golf, we take a lot of pride in having developed some of the best and most consistent golf swings on the planet. We do this through simplicity. Our Full Swing Masterclass will take you on a step-by-step, easy-to-understand process on how to get your golf swing better than ever. Join the many before you who've utilized our Full Swing Masterclass to take their games to the next level and beyond.